and welcome back to what's cooking viewers it's been a while we had so much fun with nankali in the kitchen last week but this week we have someone that has the passion for medicine as well as poetry and mixing it all up in one bowl that's his passion so i cannot wait to have this conversation with him and just see what he cooks up in the kitchen but before we head over to meet him and get busy in kitchen 82 we just once again like to thank kitchen 82 for hosting us so let's not keep our guest waiting let's go meet him and we are back and we are ready to start digging in to all of this we're going to be making something really special for you guys i don't know what it is yet i, I have an idea because i bought the ingredients but here to tell you guys what we'll be making and here to also tell us about his journey in his career in his life welcome to kitchen 82 keith good afternoon hello how are you my name's arm yova Meleki keith and well this is the side that hardly most of you know about which is me cooking all right um i am a very good cook i must say i have been doing it since 2013 and the other side as well when I'm not cooking is I was I just recently graduated pharmacy and well there's poetry artistic side music poetry and novels as well all right okay. so what we're gonna be cooking for you is a dish called inkoko chisihu ninyama translated is pup um, cabbage and meat all right okay Thank you you said there that you are a good cook okay you've been cooking since 2013 when you say you've been cooking since 2013 elaborate on that just a little well, bit. well it's actually something i'll never forget the first person i ever cooked for was my second youngest sibling okay and um, his name is eden he was starving one time and <laughs> at the time um, not him starving <laughs> yeah not really starving well hungry yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um, at the time my grandmother had asked me because he went to her and said i'm hungry what can i eat mm -hmm. and she called me you know i wasn't really you know i was pretty young then and being called and she said cook for your brother and i was like what am i supposed I've to do i've never done me? anything before and she said well i'll walk you through it and uh well most of the other cooking stuff i learned it's my father that taught me okay um, i've lived with him since the age well from the age of two up until well recent okay and, yeah but that is something i'll never forget having to cook for my little brother and the whole step procedure and your grandmother they're telling you exactly telling what to do. do this and do that and well she she was blind she passed on um, but she was blind and telling me all that that was something that really you know motivated it, me to do it in the exact way and i'm really good with instructions okay. i cooked up something really nice awesome so yeah. we can expect something really delicious at the end of this okay because you're pretty confident in your well, cooking skills and i like that mm, you'll like tell that. me how it tastes isn't okay it? Uh, yeah of course <laughs> maybe we'll ask michaela behind the camera to come and taste as well who knows let's see how it goes <laughs> okay um keith our viewers know this by now but in kitchen 82 you are the head chef Okay. I'm simply here to assist you in any way possible. So you're going to guide me through what you need me to do. Okay. So from the peppers, I'll let you cut them in a manner of which you like. But for the cabbage, mm -hmm. I'll run you through that. Okay. Tomatoes and onions, I have a very specific way of how I like them cut because okay. um, it readies them better when they're cut into really small pieces. Mm -hmm. um, of course. So. I'll run you through it. Okay, but so, before we start, I just have one last question. Okay. The dish we're preparing today. Mm -hmm. Okay. You gave it a very, very beautiful name that I will not attempt to pronounce it first. <laughs> but yeah. as you said, to translate pup and pup, cabbage. Meat and cabbage. And, and, yeah, pup and flesh, yeah. as we all know it, pup and flesh. Right. What significance does this, this dish have to you personally? This is a go-to dish for my people, my culture. I am a of Ndebele native, but also Winkuhane, mm -hmm. which is Subia, and Yei. Okay. Right? Um, so with this, it's mainly focused on the Nkuhanes, where my uncles never liked eating something, you know, 
when you tell them, can we not just have bread for dinner? They yeah, will no. be like, no, no we no, are not no. about Not in that. this house. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> this is just that traditional go-to meal. Okay. So it's this and with a, either fish, which is called Zambezi brie. Mm -hmm. uh, but for now, today we're going to focus Just focus on, on this, this part. Yeah. Okay, cool. I am ready to learn how to make this. Hopefully after this, I'll remember. I doubt it, but mm. I'll go back and rewatch this. Yeah. Okay, I am here. Okay, to learn. I'll start with the peppers first. Okay. Because this will need to do. Uh, Put that on the side. We washed all of this, guys. Don't yeah. worry. We washed everything. <laughs> of course. So you'll cut the pepper mm -hmm. in the manner of which you know how. But for the onions, I'll cut it in my own manner. Okay. All right. So we'll just chop that off. And then this. Did your grandmother also teach you how to do this? No, this was my father's side okay. of the teaching. Um, most of the relish dishes. Okay. Yeah, my dad was responsible for those. So your dad's also the man in the kitchen well, who loves cooking? Now, well, he would always be busy with work, but he always did say, uh, if I have a house and food in the kitchen, I will not go out to a restaurant unless I do want to take myself out. Okay. But he believed in the whole family meal at home. Well, that's an important thing to believe in because that's how you build relationships, build bonds, mm -hmm. you know, and just connect after a busy day, you know. Yeah. That's quite beautiful. So tell us, Keith, you study pharmacy, right? Yeah. You just finished, like literally just finished. Literally just finished. Can you tell us what made you decide, okay, I want to be a pharmacist? You know, growing up, most kids are asked what you want to be when you grow up, and they'll be saying stuff of pilots, um, doctors. I've always been in love with, well, medicine, of course. Okay. But in the same sense, I didn't want something that, you know, kept me at work almost all the time. Okay. You know? And for pharmacy, being at the time presentable and involving medicine, you know, I chose to do it. And well, I have free time for my artistic side. Okay. Um, yeah. That's now, where did the love for medicine come? Did it just... It's something it? you grow loving, you know, knowing it keeps you happy, you're busy, you know, you tend to I heal to the patients and you heal more. I know a lot of nurses, mm. okay, or student nurses, let's say. Right. And they're, the people I know, they're like divided on this topic. I don't know why, maybe it's a, a medical thing, Yeah. but are you a Grey's Anatomy fan? Not necessarily, no. You know, it? um, <laughs> it's not because I haven't given it a shot. I okay. have seen it, seen a few episodes, uh, but I would be lying if I said I have watched it. <laughs> oh, yeah, but... Yeah, because the, the, the nurses I've spoken to, some of them are like, yes, they're obsessed with it. And others are like, it's okay, but it's not... I was more of a Dr. House fan. Okay. Yeah. I um, haven't watched the series, but I'm obsessed with TikTok and I've seen the snippets. It's the doctor that everyone thinks is crazy, yeah, right? Yeah, think he's... I am enjoying this talk and I am... I think I'm doing a good job with my... Bell Very papers. <laughs> yeah. So we're just gonna take a short break while me and Keith finish with what we're busy with. But when we'll, we are back, we will catch you guys up on how we did what we have been doing. So don't go anywhere. We will be right back after this. Welcome to my dot NA Cars, your ultimate destination for everything automotive. I am your host, Diana Master. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Discover the latest models, innovative technologies, and expert insights from our passionate hosts. Learn essential maintenance tips and get exclusive behind-the-scenes access to the automotive industry. Don't miss my dot NA cars on NTV every Thursday at 2100 hours. Tune in and ignite your passion for automobiles. Okay, guys, me and Keith got really busy. We chopped everything that needed to be chopped. Guys, I just learned how to make save up up. I'm not the best at making it. I have no strength in my right arm, but my man Keith here is a professional and I'm sure I cannot wait to taste yeah. his pup and see you know, how it goes. But right now we're busy making the meat, so I'm gonna leave it up to Keith to explain what exactly he has done here. 
and what he will do next. So Keith, yeah. the floor is yours. All right, so here we, we have boiled meat, all right, to soften it and make it chewable. Uh, you don't have to struggle with that. Then we have uh, chopped up veggies here. We have green pepper, red pepper, yellow pepper, tomatoes, and then we have the onion separate. So with this, it'll go in in, a, in the second last stage. So with the onions, they go in first because we need them to really A little fry, fried, you know? yeah. We need to change color. All right, so we're just gonna do that now. Uh, and note is there's very little cooking oil in here because, okay. you know, pharmacy as well, you don't want to cause any health Yeah, you want to have a healthy, delicious meal, okay? You, right. can, you can have a delicious meal and let it be healthy, guys. So I've just left a little, like, very little in there. Okay. For a separate dish. Uh, okay, so Keith, before we took a break, you mentioned that besides being a soon to be graduate in the pharmaceutical industry, you also have a passion for the creative spaces. Yeah. More particularly, you're a poet and an artist. Anything else you want to say about that? Well, with the uh, poetry, uh, I'd have to say my dad played a huge role in that okay. part because, you know, growing up, I was just told, uh, I think I was in the third grade at the time, and they just came and told me uh, we're moving to Rundi, mm -hmm. course, which is in the Kabango East region. And we moved there, I got there, I had very little friends. Mm. Right, so he'd be like, you come home from school, you read up on books, like all literature books, Shakespeare, um, Dorado, or Donald Collier, uh, amongst other books, of course. So, you know, reading that, getting that, yeah. you feel the writer's view, you know, fourth, fifth grade, and since then, I've always just read. And at some point in my life, you know, I decided, you know, let me give this writing thing a Let's try. give it a shot. Let's see how it I, goes. Uh, it actually came based off of an inspiration where I decided, how about I write based off, um, based off of, you know, my background. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I wrote a poem, recited it at a school event, and, mm -hmm. you know, they liked it. They loved it. They asked for its breakdown, amongst other things. And in class, I had my mates asking me to write stories or essays whenever we're given homework and stuff. You were I that kid in class, okay? Yeah, they did everyone's <laughs> English homework for them. I was passionate about it, yeah. right? So now we have the sizzled onions there. They're nice and yeah. golden now. So I'll mix this up a little. And just I have to ask, you know, I have fine. tried poetry before. I've written a few poetry pieces. Not the best, but, you know, we're all at our own level here. Uh -huh. um, I've never been able to like recite a poem out of pure memory. Really? Is that something that you found easy to do? Very Was it a trait that you had to practice over time? Um, with the, that came with the whole uh, other side of which I make music. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you go into the studio to make a song, you have to know everything off. Well, yeah. not really have to, it's not a must. You need to know the basis yeah, of the song. But right? yeah. I always prefer that, you know, you go there, you know the song that you're going to sing, because those are your words. Yeah. So yeah. it became really So it was just like second nature to you. Yeah. Will you be able to recite us a poem later on? Of course. Okay, guys, don't, don't switch channels now. He's going to recite an original piece soon, okay? So don't move. <laughs> Well, then I'm excited for that. Okay. So for this, we get it to the base. All okay. the chopped up, all right? All our greens yeah, and the reds. the greens, the reds, the yellows. They need to get to the base because they need to sizzle. And the meat gets to the top because the yeah. flavor needs to catch up. Now, it doesn't really go down because of the whole heat rises thing. Yeah, the whole so scientific yeah, reasons scientific behind it all. Behind it, yeah. All right. Okay. So tell me a little bit more about how does medicine fit into, or let me not say medicine fit in, but how does your creative side and your medicine, your pharmaceutical experience and knowledge, how do they complement each other? Uh, you know, it's all about just making time for what you really want. 
having a schedule, you know. Most people complain and say, I have to do this, so I don't really have time for this, yeah. you know. But the whole poetry, anything else that is involved other than pharmacy, it sort of just provides therapy for me and away time. Okay. Because you don't have to focus merely on the whole, I have to read my modules now, yeah. study up, and you know, and then you're stressed about when the assignment is due and all. So all that was like on a different thing. So this here has, you know, mixed up on all. Okay. And just add uh, water there for the soup itself. Okay. All right. Just Does it have to be cold water, hot water? Does it, it matter? It doesn't really matter. It depends on how fast you want it to get going, but okay. in the sense, yeah. Okay, awesome. So then with the water, it's always important not to, you know, too much add water. Too much water because then the flavor just. You do not know how many dishes I have spoiled by adding too much water and not trusting the process. But guys, me and Keith are about to finish up. So when we come back, we'll be dishing up and I will give my honest, ruthless opinion of his cooking. Okay? So do not move. We'll be right back and you will get to hear Keith recite one of his own original poems. die aanbieder van Blitzfocus. Jy kan Blitzfocus kyk elke woensdag op DSTV kanaal 285 of Gou TV kanaal 25. En onthou, jy kan ook Blitzfocus kyk op oneup2.com Ok family, viewers, we are at my favorite part of every single episode where we get to taste the food. I'm sure you're as excited as I am. Of course. Because my stomach is on running on low. I need to eat and I am super excited to taste something from your tradition that you love to make that you obviously made with so much passion we could see that that it's something that you love to do no one forced you to be here yeah. you did this with love but before we dive in you know I have to ask I know I'm from I'm from the coast I'm from Wolfish Bay I'm not from Vanduk yeah. and I know my initial move to town was exciting you know it's new place i've never lived on my own before you know away from my parents is telling me what to do but at some point i did miss home i just wanted to hear from you what was your experience moving from your, your hometown to the you know the big city so to say away yeah. from family you know starting grown-up life as one should say how was the adjustment how did you find the experience um well the whole moving it was sort of um fast-paced thing mm -hmm. where it was the institution or my university that actually brought brought us here because we had to transfer and all. okay so one morning you're just told you have to leave uh, mm. it was exciting I'm not gonna lie yeah because you know I'm all about experiencing new things new lives you know yeah. um, just seeing the the nation at large and you know you hear about oh there's the city of lights the big city and all moving here it was all good it was all good i always heard about you know the opportunities endless i never actually did spoken word back home i'd always just write mm. you know and do keep it to media yourself over yeah. and then you know post it on my socials okay but coming here you get exposure you get this and that and we go for the spoken word music performing and all which okay. was quite wonderful and you know funny enough is I never ever modeled before. Okay. And when I got here, I modeled for the institution or at a, at a pageant and won. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, when did you, what year was this? <laughs> this was this year. Uh, so. That was September. Yeah. That was okay. September. So you are the current Mr. Velvicha, did you say Velvicha, that? Yeah. Okay. I did not know that we had royalty. <laughs> 
right. here in the kitchen. Guys, come on. But before we dive in, you did make a promise that I have to, you know, I have mm. to hold, hold, hold you accountable for the promises you make. Mm. So I know our audience and I have been waiting anxiously for this moment. I had the opportunity to hear Keith perform live one of his pieces, but can you just give us a short snippet, just a short snippet of what it is that you are capable of? All right, so this piece is titled Dreams Are Becoming, and it goes as such. They called me over, told me hi. I went over and I said bye. To home, the friends, and everybody believed at the moment and time they felt bereaved. And if I were to come of me to this place where I would show this talent and grace of face and love and with a spoon, and you tell me I will be of a dream that is to come soon. Wow. Short, sweet, and you know, the way you play with words. You know, when I started writing poetry, I had this notion in my head that every word at the end had to rhyme. Yeah. And then as you grow in the craft, you kind of realize, but that's not, it's just how it flows. It doesn't necessarily have to rhyme. Yeah. And it's quite beautiful when once you reach that stage, you're like, it doesn't have to just A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B the whole time. And with my poetry, I just have a theme where the end statement should always, you know, if not the end, it's the second last of it, should always go with the title, just to remind that makes the readers what the it is that you're writing reading. about. Yeah, so. Awesome, that was really good. Mm. We, obviously, we see the poem, poet in you, right. you know, but okay. I think so. it's time for us to give our honest opinion here. Okay. It looks delicious, yeah, it smells sauce, great. And yeah. Okay, you so go first. Is, I need okay. to know how to eat this. All right, now. The proper way of eating this. Okay. So, traditionally, it's just a nature of me, you know, to just have this done. Okay. Should bring it over. Yes, please. Let, okay. me, let, me, let me do the right thing and also just okay. wash my hands there. All right. Okay. Okay. So then that's that, that's that. And that. All right. So we have the sauce here. You take okay. from the lump. Take the lump. You have to fold it properly. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and then you. What happens if here. I don't fold it properly? Then it won't really stick. All right. So you okay. need the texture for it to not, you know, cramp up in your hands. Okay. All right. Then you get the side. Mine is probably a little too small, but I'm getting, I'm getting something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Then you have that. It's so hot. How do you eat it? <laughs> okay. All right. So you add salt if you feel there isn't enough. All right. So just a little bit. But if you feel there isn't. I definitely didn't roll my ball right, but it tastes really good. All right. Okay guys, I can already see how this is going to get really, really messy. So before I embarrass myself on TV, please, before we say bye to our viewers, mm. if they want to reach out to you, maybe read some of your poetry or listen to your, you performing, where can they find you? Um, well, with my social sites, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, it's m.m. Keith, that is K E I T H. So M dot M dot Keith for the social sites. And well, with the email, it would be M M M E L E K I, no spaces, five at gmail.com. So that would be it. Okay, great. I'm sure that they're excited to hear some more of your original pieces. Mm -hmm. But viewers, it's time for me and Keith to finish this off because I really want to dig in and I did not want to get messy on camera right. but thank you so much for watching I had so much fun with you Keith and it was so interesting to see how you make your traditional meals yeah so viewers do not go anywhere we still have a whole outro to do but catch us again next week I had so much fun we will see you next time right. well viewers I am full like I don't have to make dinner tonight I am full 
spoonful. And I had so much fun in the kitchen with Keith. I hope you guys enjoyed this time and enjoyed some of his original pieces. Be sure to check him out on social media. Who knows, maybe he'll pop up again somewhere, Francesco's, Vinyls, who knows. And you could see him perform live. But guys, that brings us to the end of yet another fun episode of What's Cooking. Don't forget to catch us every Sunday at 7.30 on DSTV channel 285 and Go TV channel 25. Stay tuned to the socials. We'll give you a few behind the scenes content and you'll see how things went with Keith this this week at Kitchen 82. But from this host to my lovely What's Cooking family, it's goodbye for now. <laughs>